Good evening, friends and family on Facebook and YouTube today. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Get excited because we are in the Word of God and it is getting so excited. It is getting so interesting and we're learning so much from His Word. So let us go ahead and bow our heads and ask God's blessing on His Word tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for getting excited in your word. God, I'm asking you, dear Father God, to reveal your understanding in our minds, dear Father God. Help us, Lord God, to just get a better understanding of your word, live your word, and just um, let it bless it unto our heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Tonight we have our pastor right here on my left. Um, thank God um, the devil had tried to take out her technology, but hey, we are standing yeah. on the word of God. So she's right here with us right now tonight. And below you have um, Reverend Thompson and Brother Thompson. And right to my right here, you have Brother Chris. Um, we are in Exodus, and we are going to start from Exodus chapter 20 um, in verse 22. And I'm going to hand over to uh, Reverend Thompson. Thank you, Reverend Hutchings. Yes, as Reverend Hutchings said, we're getting started back in chapter 20. Um, we're going to pick up, we left off at verse 26, but we're going to go back to verse 22 for further understanding. Um, and then we'll continue on getting into verse 21 and so on. And where we left off last time, Moses is still on the Mount. God is still giving him instructions. Um, he has given him the 10 commandments and he has started to go into telling them about the false idol worship. So we're going to pick up at 22 and I'll read uh, King James Version for all those who are following along with us will be coming out of the King James Version. And that's in the book of Exodus, which is the second book of the Bible. And it reads, and the Lord said unto Moses, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. And then uh, we'll pause there in 22, 23 and 22. Amen. Anybody got anything on those found upon that? He talked to them. He's letting them know where he's where he's stationed. I talk to you from heaven, he says. Okay, and then telling them, uh, you shall not make uh, gods of silver and gold, because you know that was one of the things that they did back in Pharaoh's time and back mm -hmm. in Pharaoh. They had all type of gods from silver and gold and things like that. They worshipped those rather than looking up. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. And then we have verses 24 through 26. And it reads 24. An altar, it talks about rules of building an altar here. And it says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering, and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, and thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Verse 26, neither shall thou go up by step unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Amen. Amen. So we have there his rules for his altar. Um, I have in the I have in the commentary it says uh, mention of places where the Lord would come and bless the Israelites provided a reminder that unlike pagan gods, the Lord must not be considered limited to Mount Sinai or any other locality. If they obeyed him, they would enjoy God's blessing wherever they were. And he's telling them, uh, it says, um, in the, and shall sacrifice thereon. And he's telling them what they are to do and what they are to sacrifice. And today, mm -hmm. since Jesus died on the cross, we don't have to worry about those types of sacraments. 
because whenever Jesus died on the cross, then the curtain was split in two, and we could go straight. And Israel grows in a land of Egypt, and the country of Goshen may have possession of Israel and grew and multiplied its children. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, so the whole land was with him. Okay. Um, then he's telling them down there in that 25th verse, and he's saying, if you if it's made of stone, in other words, uh, if man, if what I'm seeing here, if a man touches it, it's going to be polluted. Correct me on that. And you should, oh, I thought you were looking in the comments <laughs> on that uh, 25th verse. What do you have on that one? On the second verse. Go back to 27, where they oh, see, um, where it says, And Israel walked in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, which they gave them and brothers, and they have possessed their own and grew and multiplied exceedingly. So, amen, amen. Amen. We have Are another member attempting to join us tonight. We have a guest, so that's what, if you're watching, that's what you're seeing, that trying to come through. Praise God. Praise we'll God. continue it's on right. till she's able to join you. Okay, in verse 26, um, it says, Neither shall thy go up by the steps into thine, thine altar, that thy nakedness be discovered. In other words, we're supposed to have respect for the Lord. He said, mm. you're not supposed to go up there naked. Mm -hmm. We will see people will go before his presence today. Uh, let me put it this way. They will go into the beauty of holiness or they will go, which is a sanctuary. And they don't care if they're half naked or what. Mm -hmm. But if they respect, mm -hmm. if he gave specific instructions back then, as we always say, he's the same God today as he was back then. So yeah. we observe the Amen. same yeah. amount of respect today as he did back then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, okay. Um, going into chapter 21, the laws regarding the service. Amen. So now we're getting into the laws that God hands out. And um, these are the same laws that some Jewish uh, customs continue to keep today. Um, we'll get into going into the laws regarding servant. And uh, somebody want to read verse one through six. Verse one. Now, these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and then a seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he, if he came in by himself, he should go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she hath borne him sons and daughter, or daughters, wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love thy master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the door post. And his master shall bore his heir through with an awl. And he shall serve him forever. Amen. <laughs> This is interesting because we also will be studying about um, the year of Jubilee, whenever they have worked for so many years and then they have to set them free. Mm -hmm. okay, this is the start mm -hmm. of it right here. Okay. When it is saying in that uh, six years, in the second verse, thy shall buy and he, uh, a he thy shall buy a Hebrew servant. Six years he shall serve and the seventh he shall go out for nothing. That's the same thing we're going to be reading later on down the line. That um, after so many years, they have to set them free. But what mm -hmm. amazed me here was, I think it's verse three. 
if he has, you know, the one with the children, verse four, read verse four again. Uh -huh. verse, yeah. four, verse four. This says, it says again, if his master have given him a wife and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. Right there, that brings in a separation. And I hate to put it this way. This kind of reminds me of slavery time. The yep. masters would uh, take the husbands away and keep the wife and the children to work. Mm -hmm. So we yes. see a lot of things that can come from <laughs> this right here. Although it's turned around a different way, but mm -hmm. that kind of struck me right there. And then that next verse it says, "And if the servant shall uh, plainly say, I love my master, and my wife, and my children, I will not go free." In other words, what I see here, he's saying, "Okay, I love my uh, children and my wife." So I'm not going out. I'll just stay and stay here and work. And we saw a lot of this going on during slavery time. Yep. Okay. Um, I have in the commentary it puts it further. It says uh, these rules for Hebrew slaves apply to both males and females. Um, an Israelite might choose to go into slavery to pay restitution for theft, uh, to repay an and other debt or to obtain food and shelter in hard times or on penalty of death also to escape being being killed and then it says uh rules out exodus 21 16 rules out kidnapping and forcing an israelite into slavery mm -hmm. and while the life of slaves might be difficult there were penalties for mistreatment and slaves who ran away were not to be returned to their masters according to deuteronomy chapter 23. Very interesting. And then it just kind of um, dawned on me. Remember, I think we read about this already, the cities of refuge. Mm -hmm. They killed mm -hmm. someone. They had uh, cities where if you kill a person, you yeah. could go to that city. And it was, wasn't justified, but you wouldn't be killed if you go to that city. It's interesting when you read about the city of refuge. It kind of reminds me of this one here. Yeah, we're going. It uh, it touched on it, and then it's going to go further into it in the next couple of chapters, okay. or in the next couple of verses. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly what you're talking about. I just. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on those verses before we go on to the next one? Amen. Welcome, mm -hmm. Portia. Over there, we see you. Where, where are we? Where, where, where are Exodus, we? Hmm? Exodus chapter 21. Okay. Verse 7 is where we're about to pick up at. Okay. All right. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if someone wants to read 7 through 11, and then we'll discuss it, laws regarding maid servants. I'll read that. Okay. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughter. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. And if he do not be free unto her, then shall he go out free without money. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So he's saying he's telling them um, if if a man decides to sell his daughter um, to betroth somebody and the master isn't pleased with her, he can't just throw her away. He can't just sell her off to another nation. He, he has no power to do that because he was deceitful in his dealings with her. So now he's saying. Um, and then if you take you another wife, 
um, that you can't, there can't be any differential treatment. You can't treat her no different mm -hmm. in uh, verse 10, where he says, and her duty of marriage shall not be diminished. So she still gets the title or the benefits of being a wife, yeah. you know? Um, and then if you don't want to do none of that, you still have to be on her and set her free without charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, good point. And, and, it, and my example gives uh, the example of Hagar, who was um, a servant of Sarah, who was given to mm -hmm. Abraham to bear a child. Mm -hmm. I was given an example of you know what was just read there. Mm -hmm. and that's a good yeah. one. That's a very good example right there with Hagar, mm -hmm. because uh, yeah. she was Sarah's uh, handmaiden, mm -hmm. and then Abraham is the one that passed her out because yeah. of Sarah. Though. And Sarah, mm -hmm. I guess, would be considered her master in a sense. Yeah. But she decided she you know well, she's got jealous and put her out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like you had said when we were studying it too, she didn't just leave with nothing because she had Ishmael. So she had to leave with remnant and everything else, and he was still blessed because of Abraham being his mm -hmm. his father. Yes. Yeah. After mm. um when she first when they cast her out, God brought her back. He sent her back. Yeah. He sure and did. Yeah. Abraham blessed Ishmael with gifts. You know, everybody mm. think, oh, well, Isaac got everything. Isaac received the promise. But yeah. um Ishmael and the other six boys also received gifts. He set yeah. them up as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says in my commentary, it says that um, female slaves were treated differently, and many times female slaves were concubines or second wives, as it was as, as it was saying in the in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it says sometimes a father thought that it would be more advantageous for their daughters to become concubines of well-to-do um, neighbors than to become the wife of men um, and become a servant and was not pleasing to her master. And she was to be, um, so she was to be redeemed by her near kinsmen. Mm -hmm. So they're so, marrying for status. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes mm -hmm. the, the, the father tried to go. Especially mm -hmm. if the girls are beautiful, I think the, the fathers probably mm -hmm. try to make them become the, the servant of a well-to-do neighbor, somebody with status, so that she can get some status. Well, in mm -hmm. essence, we can see some of that going on today in some of the foreign yeah. countries, because uh, some of those uh, young ladies, they are betrothed to that man before they're born. Mm -hmm. uh, India, India has a lot of that going on. Yeah, either one of them, the um, the male or the female, has nothing to say about who they marry. Mm. Yeah, and we see back in the Bible days, concubines were the thing. David has had his concubines. Solomon had how many? Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah, he had um, a whole um, group of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Okay. And then we have uh, going on to laws regarding murder. So this is what Pastor was alluding to earlier. Um, we went over it, it touched on it a little bit, but now it's going to go further. Okay. Somebody want to read verses 12 through 15. A 12. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whether he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guilt, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. 15, right? And 15, and he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is just one part of it. There's another part, part further over where it talks about. Yeah, the I think that's in Joshua. Yeah, rest, rest, rest. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is interesting. It's telling you basically the same, giving us just a, um, um, 
picture of it here. Like more or less, if you kill it, he that kills the man uh, so that he die shall be surely put to death. Oh, okay. It's the verse 13. Uh, and if a man lie not in wait, but God is him unto his hand, then I will <coughs> appoint thee a place ready to flee. And that appointed place would be, uh, according to the Bible, a city of refuge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until the only thing they had to stay there, according yeah. to the Bible, they had to stay there. Um, yeah, they couldn't leave. Kill the father and the mother, they should be put to death. Or they would be put to death. Mm -hmm. That goes right. You know what it says? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Killed, yeah. Uh, his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because he's told us back here, honor mm -hmm. thy father and thy mother. Mm -hmm. Honor. Mm -hmm. And that honoring back in those days, and I think in some of the foreign countries now, that you have to take care of that father and that mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially in Japanese culture, they take care of their old, their elderly. Yes. Um, they and live yeah. with the and family. Yeah. Well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And two, he said, honor your mother and father so that your days may be longer in the yeah. earth. So we see here, you don't, you just cut short right there. Yeah. You put the death in it. Mm -hmm. And then I like uh, verse 14 that where it says, but if a man come presumptuously, like almost like that premeditation. You you laid in wait and you thought about it, you know, and then it said slay him with guile and the word guile, um, according to the Webster Dictionary, it means to slot or cunning intelligence. So you planned it, you know, you're planning to kill this person. Mm -hmm. And then it says they'll be gone from that altar and he's going to be dead. It works on the same principle today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. A court system, mm -hmm. a lot of it stems from Bible. Yeah. 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 My my commentary says my commentary says these verses um in immunerate the four crimes that require the death penalty, premeditated murder and six commandments in uh, the sixth commandment in twenty verse thirteen, and physical violence against parents, kidnapping and verbal abuse of parents and the fifth commandment in the 20 verse 12. Allowance was made for an intentional accidental death. A guilty person could escape to one of the six cities of refuge after Israel in the land. Because of the importance of the home in serenity was guarded, parents, protected and children controlled. Disrespect was to be dealt with in the same way as murder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something. We've mm -hmm. come a long way since my era. Yeah. Children had respect for mm -hmm. their parents. Mm -hmm. Here in this country, they had respect for their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have respect for their parents. They have respect they for anybody who don't. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, there's no respect for the parents. There's no respect for the elders. A little small kid will curse an old person like me out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will mm -hmm. now. They will sure. mm -hmm. Yes. I tell you, I went over to take the girl to court. And this little kid um, showed up at the door and opened the door. Not me, had to a duck. Looked up at me. What you want? Okay. Mm -hmm. Had she been taught respect, she wouldn't have done that. No. Remember, we were talking the other week about um, respect mm -hmm. starts in the cradle, more or less. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's in the Bible. The Bible I mean, disrespect wasn't tolerated from kids to parents then, but it's 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 tolerated now. If we try to correct it, then we gonna get um. They can call the law upon us. You know, they call it abuse. But yes, still back in back in the days, they would be put to death. 
Look, well, look, and, and back in the day, there was still abuse. We was just scared to call. We knew, well, they got it. It'll take them a while to get here. My small mom would say, they got to get here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true. The Bible says that though they'll lose respect for parents and towards the latter days because people just get more relaxed, like you were saying, more relaxed, more relaxed, more relaxed in their teaching, and they're like, Oh, but spare the rod, spoil the child, you know, and that don't necessarily beat them, that just means discipline. Kids need discipline, yeah, have to really beat them. Right. Yeah. You can talk to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I got, I got a certain age. I would rather for my mother to hook me than to talk to me. Yes. You know, talk to me, I would just, oh, I break right. down. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's how you raise that yeah. child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as you said, um, Reverend Hutchins, the other week, a lot of the parents, they start off, especially with the boy children. Oh, isn't he cute? Put the hat on backwards, mm -hmm. put the earrings in the ears. Yeah. Let them drop their pants down. No, bring that child up. The Bible yes. says, train up the child the way it should go. Mm -hmm. They won't see all of this stuff that's going on. We won't see the disrespect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's roll in the laws regarding other offenses. And then we're uh, laws regarding other offenses. So we're going to go 16 through 21. Amen. 16. And he that stealeth a man and stealeth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him, smote him, be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall surely he shall be surely punished. Twenty one. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. Mm. Mm. It's a lot right there. Uh -huh. okay. So we see slavery when they used to steal people, it was wrong, according to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said right there, and he that stealeth the man and sell, selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. well, we're, All we're, seeing the that, we're seeing that today. We're not um, mm -hmm. what is such trafficking. Stuff? What is this? Mm -hmm. They're stealing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're capturing mm -hmm. these women. They're capturing these young boys. Mm -hmm. I know. Older people, they mm -hmm. put it in the fields. So that's stealing right there. What mm -hmm. they're doing today. You yeah. haven't moved too far away from what was going on back then. No. No. We sure haven't. Because they were right here on the news thing uh, where a man was just suing them because he, they had the man who owned the restaurant was keeping him as a worker and for over something years and didn't pay him because he was slow. Yeah, I think the I guy was slow. Mm -hmm. this, that, uh, one of the other churches I was in, the pastor, they somebody stumbled up on one of their cousins. They've been looking for this man for a long time, but he was picking apples mm -hmm. and um, they are pretty much under like slavery today whenever you see the people come from different countries and they out there they're picking apples and vegetables and uh the Maya, uh mm -hmm. people are going in check it's they take the money they will give them money they don't allow them to go away from that farm or whatever it is they don't allow them to go away they have stuff there for them that they will sell them that takes back the money that they've made mm -hmm. and they sharecropping once you yeah. uh, share from, then the money you make, it's, it's um, they've given you this stuff and you have to pay for it. By the time you pay for it, after you receive what you've earned, you have nothing. They've mm -hmm. taken it all back. Taking it all back. So that's- My grandmother mentioned that. 
oppression. They're doing that mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 17 said, if you curse your father and mother, put yourself to death. Put you to death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Even today, you see that too. Yeah, but a lot of people think they've gotten away with something. But yeah. look at the life of some of these people that curse their parents or beat their parents mm-hmm. or whatever. Look at their life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Somewhere mm-hmm. down the line, they have to realize mm-hmm. the Bible says that God neither, neither slumbers nor sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're going to reap what you sow. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if man don't punish you, don't believe that you got away from God. Mm-hmm. 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 Because it's going to show up. People don't believe there's a God. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. You know? But we see like Pharaoh, whether they believe him or not, they still under his control. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, that's the sad yeah. part, you know, because true with, with that, if you're disrespecting your parents, there's nobody else you would listen to. That's right. You're that's not right. gonna listen to any type of authority, period. You know, just because that's an authoritative position, and it's like likened to the Israelites with God. You know, God's our father, you know. Mm-hmm. So you you disrespecting the earthly parents he has put to guard over you. God didn't take that lightly, he said death. And that could be now that you may not physically die, but spiritually, you don't get it right. Thing. That could be part of that generational curse too. The, the parents that been cussed out probably cussed out their parents. Mm-hmm. They got it That's right. Yeah, yeah, true. Mm-hmm. It's a learned behavior. They had to see it yep. somewhere. That's, right. that's what they teach them to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's mm-hmm. what they know. Mm-hmm. And they don't watch you how you interact with your parents. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes yeah. it comes yeah. from the peers. Exactly. It comes from the peers sometimes. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can come from a decent home, but if you are like old adage, birds of a feather, what? Lock, Lock together. together. Mm-hmm. So if they get out there around their friends and they're cussing and, and cussing up a blue streak and doing drugs or whatever, they're going to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a <laughs> lot of times they'll beat them down if they don't. <laughs> I know, I know. I could have back in the day. I could have been out in the street cussing, but I won't bring that back home to my house. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. You straight up. Right. You got home. <laughs> 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 you can go out there and yeah. say that as much as you want, but you better leave it at the, at the mailbox before you come in my house. <laughs> yeah. I, don't allow, I don't allow that for my kids today, and I have yeah. old gray women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah. Say, that is what your parents will allow because that is us teaching them the right, <laughs> teaching them the way they should go. So even when they go out there and they're cussing up a storm amongst their friends, they know that they better they them get right before they get back home. Mm-hmm. Even as a grown adult, I still watch what I say around my my mother and my father. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, they don't change. They don't do that. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Quick. And she don't hold the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I thought that was interesting in 18 and 19, too, where he talks about if you guys, if there's strife between two people and they get into it and he hurts and injures them that you have to restitution. There's that restitution that we see where you have to come back. And if he survives, you pay for the time that he has lost. And not just that, you're paying to make sure that he's thoroughly healed too. Mm-hmm. They had a lot amongst yeah, themselves. Well, that person is out sick. My land is not being tended to. Mm-hmm. My land yeah. is not being tended to. So you would have yeah. to give me something for what I've lost. Mm-hmm. And that makes mm-hmm. sense. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. God is... Thorough, okay. Yes, he is. Mm. And then you, if 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 he dies, you're going to be punished. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. I like that twenty-first. 
uh, the 21st verse, I like that notwithstanding, uh, if he continues a day or two, he shall not be punished. He continues to live for he mm. is money. He's telling you right there mm. that servant is money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. So they even not just the servants, he had stuff for the masters as well. You can't be too harsh on them. You can't treat them a certain way. There's still ways you had to go about conducting yourself in order mm -hmm. to keep everybody in line with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have, um, nobody has anything else on those verses. We'll move on to verse 22 through 27. Sister Portia, just jump in when you can. Okay, I, I'll take it. <laughs> she said, I'm enjoying, I'm just watching you. <laughs> Front row seat. Okay. We um, have 549 242. All right. Uh, verse 22. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he should be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. 23, and if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. 24, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. 25, burning for burning, wound for wound, Strike for strike. And he said, and if a man smile the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And 27, and if he smite out his man's servant's tooth or his maid servant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 He right. got down to the teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he ain't playing. Mm. But um, go ahead. You all can expound on that. But one thing I was just saying, it's just do unto others as you have them do unto you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That sums it all up. Yeah. Do unto others as you yeah. have them do unto you. That's it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're going to read what you said. Right and we're talking about if a man, in other words, if a man caused that woman to lose that child, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he shall be punished. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. He should pay mm. as the judge determines. I think mm -hmm. that's good because he should pay as the judge determines. And I think in a case like that, if depending on how far along that woman is and cause that child to perish, I think that should be jail time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're taking a life. Yeah. 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 A life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I have in a commentary over here. It says um, a fine was to be assessed for a blow that caused premature delivery. The only other uses of the word mischief occurs in Genesis chapter uh, 42 and chapter 44, where the harm that Jacob feared was that Benjamin might die. Mm -hmm. That's the series that begins with life for life seems to have been a formula that might be repeated partly or in full, even in situations like blasphemy where physical harm was not an issue. The formula called for proportionate punishment rather than a process of escalating violence between individuals or families. Considering pregnancy as a special complication implies concern for the unborn infant. Certain other deaths incurred financial penalties, according to Exodus 21. The case assumed that even the unintentional injury must be remedied. While Exodus 1 and 2 with this portrayal of uh, intentional injury to infants stands in the background of this passage. Mm. If it's intentional, yes, they should pay according to yep. what the judge hands down to them. If it's accidental, yeah. we can understand that. Right. Yeah. But if it's intentional, and let me tell you something, some of these men get uh, intoxicated 
Yeah. A lot of pregnant women, this is quick. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the first place they're going to go for is the stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially they don't want the child. Well, whether they want it or not, if they get drunk and they're yeah. mean and they're nasty, mm. that's what they're going to go for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. What is what is verse 26 say? <laughs> <laughs> the eye is made that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eyes' sake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for his tooth's uh, sake. Can't work. Okay, can't work if you can't see. No. <laughs> you definitely can't wait and work with the two tape. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. There's been a plenty of people, and I've seen it on those farms out there. They work with two tapes and everything else. Mm. If you can't see, it's a horse of different color. Your sickness. <laughs> Days, your sickness meant absolutely nothing. Nothing. God went down to the bottom there. Hand for hand, to wound for a wound. So basically, you're not to hurt those servants. Yeah. Well, you keep them healthy. So yeah. Like, yeah. And, uh, back then, as I said, that was uh, man manual labor. Mm -hmm. They didn't have machinery out there to do anything. They talk about those yeah. oxen. They put those old big meat cows and things up back then, for, uh, more so than mules. Mm -hmm. Put that yoke mm -hmm. around their neck, and that's how they till the soil. Yeah. So they yeah. needed those servants back then. Yeah. Why do you think whenever a slave would escape and run away, they take the mm -hmm. hound dogs and run them down? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they, right. they needed that labor. Yeah. They, had to, they had to live big. Master had to live big. And the mm -hmm. only way Master could live big would be off of that man's back. Mm -hmm. So don't hurt that man. Mm -hmm. He may hang, put him up like in roots. He may put him up beside the tree and beat him. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have too much time to recover before he got back out in that field. Mm -hmm. That's why they didn't live too long either during that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody else on those verses before we move on to the laws regarding the oxen? Amen. So we're getting on to he didn't just have laws for people, he had the laws for the animals too. Won't God do it? <laughs> He's thorough. Yes, and that lets you know how you can trust him. He's that thorough. Yeah, he ain't even no stone on time. Yeah, man. Um, Verse 28 through 36, and you'll probably get stopped. We'll probably take this in a couple chunks at a time. Uh, 28. Okay. Right, I got yeah. it. Go ahead. That's it. If an ox go a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. Okay, let's hold that right there because that's interesting. In other words, with those horns on his head, if he mm -hmm. uh, go or run into with um, a man or a woman and mm -hmm. that person dies from these horns, what it says, he shall be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. But you see, it says the flesh shall not be. Not be not In yeah. other words, the owner can't and nobody can eat that. Right. And kill it. Yeah, mm -hmm. have to kill it. Mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. that that's that's very interesting. And that's a life for a life. Mm -hmm. And then it says he shall be quit. So you can't blame it on the owner, you know. No. But then too, it it reminds me of when we were talking um about with Noah and how he wiped out the animals and I remember the question was put something about them and they were you could see that even animals can be compromised you know mm -hmm. in here even animals can sin too you know in here I thought that was interesting but it'll get further into it okay. but okay. if but if the ox were one to push with his horn in time past and it has been testified to his owner, and he had not kept them in, 
but that he had killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be thrown and his owner also shall be put out to death. Hmm. That's I it. knew that was there. Yeah, yeah that's what I was talking yeah. about. Yep. That, that means it. if you know if you know the ox is already wild and you will hurt somebody, you should keep him in. Yeah. It's just like the people mm -hmm. with the with the with the, with the um the dogs that they know that they have bad dogs and yet still they leave their gates open. Mm -hmm. so they can um bite people. You yeah. know, it's you bite. that's that if if a dog you know you have a bad dog and he comes out and bites somebody, that means that you should take responsibility for that. Right. But again, yeah. I said, first time may be a mistake, but the second time ain't no mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you they have got one a history. of those pit bulls and, uh, like she said, those dead dogs, Rockwilders, you know that dog is dead from the jump street. Yes. So that one needs to be <laughs> on a chokehold at all times. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> when they bite down, they don't turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, if there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he have bored a son or have bored a daughter, according to this judgment, shall it be done unto him. If, if the ox shall push a manservant, manservant, or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. That's that's good right there. In other words, now, um, not only is that animal going to be stoned, but the owner has to pay mm -hmm. for the damage for what that ox did. And that's no more than right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only thing I say about that, <laughs> when I was young, and uh, when I was real young, my cousin and her friend, we had to walk to school, right? But to get there much, much quicker, if we go across the cow pasture, mm -hmm. uh -oh. but there was a <laughs> red bull in there. <laughs> Whenever at that bull, you had to look to find out where that bull was before you come out of your hiding place. Mm -hmm. And then both would catch me on both sides by my hand, and you had to run. And you so see, when you're running up to, you run up to what you call a barbed wire fence. Yes. You got to get over that fence. Mm -hmm. right? But now, if we had gotten uh, bo um, uh, pushed, or whatever it is, by that bull, mm -hmm. That would have been on us mm -hmm. because yeah, that you know, was in his place. We mm -hmm. were in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? But here, what we're seeing here is like the owner wasn't keeping that oxen where it should be. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the same way, like uh, Reverend Hutchins said, those dogs, a lot of times they don't keep those dogs. The owners feel that they can speak to that dog. And mm. the dog is going to respond to them at all times. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen the German Shepherd turn around and bite my sister-in-law on her behind. Hmm? Okay, yeah, her own dog. Mm. When you're dealing with these dogs, you're dealing with cross breeds. And most mm -hmm. of those dogs don't have good sense. <laughs> <laughs> but if you call them, they think if you call that dog, it's going to stop. Yeah. That's what I always tell my kids. Don't pick up a dog because the dog is kind of like an elephant. They're going to remember when you come by the next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, 30, 33. And if a man shall open a pit or if a man shall dig a pit and not cover it and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. Mm -hmm. okay. And if one man's ox hurt another that he died, then they shall sell the live ox, the live ox and divide the money of it. 
and the dead ox also they shall divide. All right. mm -hmm. 36. Or if it be known that the ox had used to push in time past and his owner had not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the death and the dead shall be his own. Mm -hmm. All of that makes sense. Yeah. That's just like common sense, yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we see a lot that's going on today that stem right here from this Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You say nothing new under the sun. Amen. Um, the commentary down here says uh, stoning was a form of public execution and not the ordinary way to slaughter an animal. If the owner's negligence caused the death, he too must die or pay a ransom for his life. The possibility of a ransom implies that the owner was less directly responsible for the person's death than in cases of murder. This value placed on human life over animals fits with God's earlier statement, surely your blood of your life will I require because humans are made in God's image. Other ancient Near, Near Eastern laws treat these situations strictly as monetary matters. In cases a child dies, the stipulation that the negligent owner was to be dealt with according to his judgment treated the lives of children as a valuable and protected the negligent owner's child whose life was forfeited in some ancient law codes. So if if, if it killed the child, you can't come kill my child in return. All right. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That makes mm. sense. Well, it's good that he put that law in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what did it say back there? Eye for an eye, two for two? Two for two. Mm. Uh -huh. So now you kill my child. It killed my child. I'm going to kill your child. Yep. So he put this law in here to prevent that. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's too. It prevented people taking that that law out of context to use yes. it to apply to their situation. That mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. And it, it clearly it clearly denotes um negligence from intentional. So mm -hmm. when, it, when when you're negligent, you you will be dealt with differently from when um from when it's accidental. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, so you, they, he, he, he knows you're, you're still going to pay the consequence, even though it's an accident, because mm -hmm. it belongs to you. So you're still going to be responsible somewhat for what that, that animal does. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when it's, when, it's, when it's pure negligence, you're fully responsible and you're yeah. still going to get the full extent of the law. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like us killing people today if we hit them with a car with intention mm -hmm. or if it's an accident. There's still a penalty anywhere you go. Anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. One is not as severe as the other. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's just awesome to see that God didn't even leave that out of it. Oh, he left nothing mm -hmm. out, huh? Nothing out. No. He get out of Leviticus. He tells you here, huh? Everything. Yes. Leave everything. everything. Imagine Yep. And you got God. You you don't even have to think. <laughs> really, you just read these words and He got it. Yes. Uh, six fifty three. Everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. It's six fifty three, and as usual, once we start diving into the Word of God and it starts getting good, then is when the time just creep up on us out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, you know, we we just getting ready to start, and it's time to stop. So I mean, we're gonna go ahead and um, pray to God and um, ask His blessings on what we've already read. Um, Pastor, you have any uh, last words? Only thing I can say for the people: this word is true. What we're seeing here in Genesis and Exodus. It's happening today. He laid out the laws for us back then, for them back then, and those the laws apply to us today. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, Reverend Reverend Thompson. Um, I just that song. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Ooh. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Because. The way that he's just in detail with something that people may think is so small and so great and how much we mean to him and how much he has everything covered. He's already thought of everything. It's just like 
Why wouldn't I, I can't do nothing but trust him? You know, we can't do nothing but trust him, trust him with our life because as we can see, he holds the future. Amen. 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 Brother Thompson. Uh, just going off what she said that, you know, he, we can trust in him. And what I was thinking about as we were reading this, you know, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. If he knows every, you know, the number of every hair that we have in our head, he knows, you know, what we lose when we're going through, you know, our daily lives. So he, he knows everything and we can trust in him to, you know, build a foundation for our lives. And you know, we'll be able to, you know, we listen and read his word. We'll be able to do things that he, you know, if we follow his word, we'll be able to do things that he wants us to do and live a successful life. Amen. 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 Sister Portia? Uh, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> All right, all right. No problem. I'm just, you, y'all gonna have to be patient with me because no, it's okay. this is all very new to me. Even though, I mean, I was raised in church and went to Sunday school and some Bible study, but I just, I, I'm just trying to learn all this over again. So just be patient with me. Amen. Amen. We thank you for stepping out on faith and joining us. Yeah. Amen. I'm Brother Chris. Yeah, I just think it's interesting, and, and I'm not going to uh, tell a story. I'd probably get to this, too, but, you know, we all try to dive into that Bible and find what fits what, what our argument, and as you can see, you know, like for I, for I, you, you got to keep reading. You got to you gotta keep reading and get deep in the Bible to make sure that you're standing in the right accord with the Lord's Word. Amen. 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 And I mean, just to summarize everything, as Brother Chris says, follow the instructions of the Lord. He told us that we were made to serve him and he didn't leave us on our own. He gave us specific instruction as to the how, the when, the why, the where, everything you can think about is in the word of God. So if you just trust, believe and lean upon him, he will, he will attend to your every need. Yeah. Um, with this, I'm going to ask us to close your eyes and let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your instructions. Thank you for your direction. And thank you for your love that you have given to us in this word. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Something said will be, you will be able to apply it to your daily life. And the announcements are as follows. On um, Wednesday night, we have our Bible study. Join us right here, same place, same time. On um, Ministries of Hope Christian Church, Facebook or YouTube. Pray with us on Tuesdays. Don't miss our prior uh, meeting on Tuesdays. It prior changes things. And that's where we start communicating with God so that we can further our understanding in his word. The number is 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379-088 pounds. We want to pray with you and for you. Um, uh, the Sunday school is a continuation of um, this Bible study. You see how good it is. You see how great it's getting. So don't miss Sunday school because I'm sure you will miss all the great lesson. It is at 9.30 in the morning, Sunday mornings, on Ministries of Hope Facebook and YouTube Live. Of course, Sunday morning ser services, don't miss our Sunday morning services. You get a whole nother lesson in the Sunday morning service at 1030 on Sunday mornings. So we're feeding you, we're preparing you, we're guiding you. So just stay with us and, and um, join us. And also donations to this ministry can be made at ministriesofhopechristianchurch.com using the square or PayPal. Thank you for joining us. We love you and you have a great night. You too. Good night.